Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Cape Rugby TV uh, Wednesday nights. We talk about what's happening in the world of Western Roms Club Rugby. Big thanks to our partners on board with us. MCAM 24 Pharmacy on the corner of Durban Road and uh, the N1. Uh, Dulux Maitland at number 30. Cooper Road and of course Score Energy Drinks. Uh, score on board with uh, Western Province Club Rugby for the Western Province Club Rugby 7s. And um, or you can win yourself a case of score a little bit later during the course of the show. A lot coming up tonight as we've had in the last few weeks. It's been very busy. And of course, uh, in the last, uh, over the last weekend at least, it was the Hamadiyas Community Tens. Uh, we'll be taking a look at the Shield semi final, the Cup semi final. Uh, so in that, it's Hamadiyas and Callies and Wraithby and Progress, Vineyards and Primroads, Morningstar Tigerberg, Hamadiyas Progress, Morningstar and Vineyards in the Cup final. And then a whole host of interviews, including an interview with the president of Western Province Rugby Football Union, Mr. Zeltmarie. And then a little bit later in the show, we will also be looking at uh, practice sessions from Busy Bees and Eerste Rafir and Stormers training, as we normally do. But let me introduce you to my panel this evening, Jerome Parvater. Welcome back. Yeah, JP. Uh, the last weekend was a busy weekend. This weekend again, so it's um, it's good. Mr. Danny Jones, welcome back, Manem. Good to be back, JP. Every week now. Yes, it's been a, definitely it's a it's a occurrence every week. But um, I'm happy to be here. Oh, we happy were expecting Faisal Felton to arrive, but that uh, turned out to be uh, Mr. Danny Jones. Well, uh, um, in my absence, <laughs> Faisal will be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, let's get the ball rolling. As we said uh, earlier on, of course, uh, it was the Hamadiyas Community Tens over the weekend at uh, City Park. A lot of fun there. Hamadiyas up against Caledonia Roses. This was, of course, in the Shield semi final. <laughs> So it ended up being a win there for Hamadiyas, 17-7 in the, the uh, Shield semi-final. Uh, Hamadiyas beating Caledonian Roses. Um, Jerome, 10s rugby is a little bit different to 15s rugby. Yeah, it's uh, actually the right time to play 10s, JP. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit more than three guys more in the team than 7s. So uh, it, it's getting closer because there is a scrum, yeah. well, a, sort of five guys in the scrum. So. Um, it's actually great preparation uh, pre-season um, for the guys, for the props and everybody to get back into the game and it's yeah. a bit faster, yeah. a lot more space in the field. Uh, Danny, um, mm -hmm. the uh, community tents are uh, well supported, nice initiative. Yes, it's a good initiative by Amadeus and I must compliment the club and the officials um, for what they've done and I think this is the second year that this has been going um, but I must say it, it's really improved, uh, great turnout from clubs. Um, good brand of rugby yeah. um, shows that um, club are taking their rugby on a serious level, you know, and they all want to improve. Would and you recommend Jerome more tents? Uh, would you recommend more of these? Look, as Jerome is correct that um, seeing that we secured sevens now towards the end of the season, maybe th uh, the pre-season tents is, is a good thing to do because um, you at least would have a, your, your, your front row plus whether it's a lock or, or flanks playing as locks but at least you, you'll have a more settled 
uh, uh, platform for, for 15s, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Right, folks, let's move straight along then. Uh, the uh, next match, of course, in the Shield semi-final was uh, Wraith be up against Progress. So then uh, Wraith be up against Progress in the Shield semi-final. Um, and a uh, 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 win for Progress, five, uh, 10 points to 5 over Wraith be. Uh, Jerome, that's a pretty small margin. Yeah, it is. Uh, but just seeing there now, uh, we were just talking about the, 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 the plus of the 10s. Is, uh, you can see that last Friday that been scored there, at least the guys followed through, uh, yeah. the support runners. Where in 15s, guys tend to stay back. There's a little bit more space. So they uh, sort of four guys following up in good handling yeah. to score the try. So if you use the tens to uh, to the right effect for, uh, to the game to get to the fifteenth, yeah. then you can you can improve all sorts of skills and all sorts of um, patterns that you want to play w with lesser players. But just to correct it, yeah. Danny, would you say um, progress uh, had home ground advantage? Yet? Most certainly, <laughs> most certainly. Isn't this and your it's club? good to see? No, uh, my club is Perseverance. Isn't that the same uh, thing? But uh, Progress, uh, yeah, never say die. Um, they show never say die spirit. Progress, yeah. home ground advantage for Progress. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, fantastic stuff there. Uh, progress uh, coming through in the Shield uh, semi-final. Uh, we'll take more uh, look at, at the rest of the, um, the matches at the Community 10s in a, in a sec. Uh, MCAM 24 Hour Pharmacy, of course, on board with uh, Cape Rugby TV. Where you can find MCAM um, on the corner of um, uh, Durban Road and the N1. So if you're driving out of the city, then MCAM is on your right-hand side there at Durban Road. And if you're coming up into the city, on your left-hand side, just look for that big MCAM sign. Free parking outside. Uh, they've got a beautiful coffee shop upstairs. Great prices. Really fantastic. Uh, pharmacy so make sure that you get out there we'll be back after the break and when we come back from the break we'll take a look at uh, vineyards and uh, primrose they were of course in the cup semi-final both those teams coming from uh, super league a and super league b respectively of course primrose back in super league a now it's going to be interesting to see what kind of form uh, the teams are delivering <music> Cape Rugby TV, uh, we are taking a look at uh, the Community 10s, the Stormers practices, as well as uh, some of the uh, pre-season um, practice sessions. Incidentally, you can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. But if you want to see something really funky at the moment, go to our Instagram page at Cape Rugby TV, where we are profiling some of the Western Province Club Rugby players, especially those that started off with us uh, during the captain's table. For example, Wraithby's Aidan Robertson. There's a nice picture of him. And then we've got Blue Star's Aidan Fisher. is a player there. Aidan Fisher. And, uh, of course, Aidan Robertson is a center at Wraithby. Flank, Goodwood's Clyde Gordon. Um, Chris Barnes, he's a flank at Helderberg. Um, uh, Tian Radain is a center from Durbel. Um, Wilton Peterson, the wing from SK Warmers. And the list goes on and on. Find these player profiles on our Instagram page. Uh, having a little bit of fun, just sort of more exposure for the club rugby guys. Let's take a look now at the uh, community tens vineyards up against Primrose in uh, the cup semi-final.
Hello, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. Uh, reminder then, the Instagram handle at, in, uh, at Cape Rugby TV. Remember, always use the hashtag hash WP Club Rugby Jerome. Vineyards coming away with a win there. 17 points to 12 over Primrose. Um, yeah, good win for, yeah. for, for, for Vineyards there. And um, I watched them on, on, on Saturday. They look good. They look good. So, uh, and the guys look fit. So they must have worked hard during the off season. Uh, I was I was really surprised to see how, how the guys were running and, and, and everybody looking safe. So well done to them. And I mean, Primrose is not a uh, easy side. Primrose were also playing. They were up until yeah. the end. They were up um, for this game. But um, yeah, Vineyards they just take the take the points. It was, it was really a great game. All right, folks, let's move along then. We've got still a lot of games to look at. Uh, next game, of course, in the Cup semi-final, uh, Tigerberg up against Morningstar. Welcome back there, folks. Uh, right, so Tigerberg Morningstar. Jerome, is it not a little bit um, in the world of 10s? If you look on page 7s rugby, 10s rugby, 15s rugby, Tigerberg is a Super League A outfit. Morningstar's uh, um, come through the ranks. They've done extremely, league, yes. exceptionally well. But is it not a little bit... I mean, does 10s level the playing field, so to speak? Because you're looking at a Super League A club here against a Super League C club. Yeah, it can. It just depends on, 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 on how they use their speed. Um, sometimes the, 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 the smaller guys... In sevens, uh, they faster, and they, it's just not about size. In tens, uh, you need a bit of you need your forwards there, but obviously, I think uh, uh, morning styles guys are just in, 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 in um, they just a bit nippy and bit faster and quicker, and um, yeah, they they also had a great tournament. They they surprised a few few sides, and uh, we know JP, we've been following morning star, and and, and and it seems every year they're on a, on a, on a rise and going up. Yeah. So they must have do something right there at the club, and, and, and um, I think we're gonna see some fireworks uh, this year on, on, on morning star again. Well, it's like a bit of a leveler. You know, it looks like obviously uh, it's not 15 rugby, so uh, it gives Danny it gives clubs an opportunity. Yes, it does. It's like the FA Cup competition, you know, it gives you throwing a, 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 a clubs, yeah. For uh, soccer. Soccer, yeah, and you just, yeah. and then whoever rocks up and who wants it on the day wins, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah. it's good to, for Morningstar. Okay. If it's soccer or football, I'm going to have to lean on your experience there. Um, yeah. I'm a little bit out of out of touch. Okay, you stick to karate then. <laughs> 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 All right, we managed to yeah. catch up uh, for the first time this year, in fact, with the president of uh, Western Bronze Rugby Football Union, of course, newly elected last year and is already starting to take the reins, so to speak, at the union, Mr. Zelt Marie. Yeah, no, I mean, th this for, for me, it's, it's a very f f f f f fantastic event. I, I think it's, it's, it's history in the making that we're having this fantastic tournament here today, something that has never been staged on this ground, actually. This ground, as you know, has, has been rich in history, where the, the, the people have been forced off their grounds in 1957 on the banks of the Lisbeck River. And therefore, this being an icon, it's a national monument, and therefore it's so fitting for this tournament to take place, especially a community tournament, 
people that know where they came from, the love from, from District 6 days, from the Woodstock, from the Mandenberg. It's a real, this is the only, what shall I say, if I, I don't want to go into color, but the black owned sports field in South Africa, owned by rugby people in terms of it. And the vision of the forefathers of this club, we must salute them, the courage that they had. So it's well done to our Diaz and the executive committee was organized this fantastic tournament there. As we see, we had great rugby so far today, with the final still to come, actually, we're going to see even greater rugby. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's actually, uh, one actually feeling very glad and happy for Morningstar. Morningstar, as you said, coming from a region, if, as, as I think we might almost be politically, they're actually were a farm club, actually. Now, I mean, being a farm club and for them to excel, though, and you can see it's all about giving people opportunity, opportunities and creating the platform and creating the structures and giving the, the players the conditions and the nutrition. And you can see how healthy and good and strong they are as a team, actually. And South Africa, as you know, we've got so many talents, actually, in our poverty-stricken areas, actually. And it's about, we call on our city council to start improving those facilities and to build the facilities. We call on the Department of Health and of Welfare to provide our kids with nutrition and conditioning because there are so many stars that get lost in the system, actually. And if Morning starts as a farm club, can beat a top club like Tigerberg today, actually. I mean, then we just need to start unearthing all the talent in terms of so well done to Morning Stars. Well, here we go, folks. So Mr. Zeltman Rea, of course, the president at the Western Roms Rugby Football Union. And of course, we're hoping to get him on the show quite soon. We haven't had him on the show yet. Danny, any chance we can get the president on the show to come talk to us? Most certainly, JP. We, we give me a shout and we will arrange it. 100%. Looking forward to, le looking forward to have as many of the leaders as Western Province Rugby on the show at some time during the year to come and tell us what it is that they've got different portfolios, right, at, in the, at Western Province. Yeah, that's right. Tell us yeah. about some of that, uh, the kind of, I suppose you've got women's uh, development, transformation. Uh, uh, there's development, there's transformation. Um, there relationships. There is women's, there's relations. What does the relationships guy do? No, the relationship cool. uh, person deals with if there are... Um, Conflict between two right. clubs, they right. would okay. intervene, engage with them, Do you get bring them to parties. In the past, yes, but over the last few years, um, it has improved the relationships across the board. Right. So the relationship committee, they would send people out, and let's say there's a tense game, yeah. send people out there, and you know the people like seeing union officials around because then it does help with regards to reducing conflict. Right, folks, we're going to take an ad break. But before we go to the break, the SCORE uh, energy drinks are on board with Cape Rugby TV. And as you know, you can win yourself a case of SCORE. If you want to win yourself this case of SCORE now, just SMS the word SCORE to 33090. 33090, you put yourself in the mix to win a uh, case of a SCORE energy drinks. Congratulations to last week's winner, Candice Sneeman. Candace walks away with a case of score. Candace, someone from Cape Rugby TV is going to be in touch with you shortly. Um, and you can come and collect your case of score energy drinks. There you see the logo behind me right now. Right, we're going to take an ad break. When we come back from the break, we'll take a look at the uh, Shield final match between Hamadias and uh, Progress. Welcome back, everybody. Um, nice to have you along. It's Wednesday night, and of course, you're looking at the Western Province uh, Club Rugby TV show, South Africa's most popular club rugby TV show. In fact, I think maybe even South Africa's only club rugby TV show. Hamadiers were up against progress in the Shield final of the Community Tens over the weekend. We, of course, went out there to film a number of the uh, games, the finals and the sh semi-finals. And uh, we, uh, as I say, mentioned to catch up there with uh, Hamadiers up against progress in the Shield.
I'd say we, we're not where we want to be. Uh, I think we've got uh, a lot of guys still to, to join us. But, um, you know, we go on, on, tra on training, we, we do us, uh, what we have and we, uh, yeah, we, we, we try and, uh, and um, achieve us what we have. And I think that's what MTS like is all about. Um, it's infusing the old with the new. Um, we've got a very uh, young uh, executive as well, a uh, very new coaching staff as well. Um, and then, and with our, we combine the, the, the youth with our experience, with our values that we have at the club. Um, and, and hopefully for the season, you know, we, it will bode us well and, and take us to, to, uh, to the you know, next, uh, next stage of where we want to be. And Shield winners, 100%. Uh, we, uh, we pushed the, the cup winners in our, in our group game. Uh, we, we, we led them 17-0 uh, uh, at, uh, at one stage. Um, again, uh, inexperience probably uh, cost us at the end of the day. But congratulations to, to Vineyards. They deserve it. Um, they played extremely well. Uh, champions uh, never give up, and that's what they did against us as well. Champions never give up. Isn't that fantastic? Hamadiers then uh, with a 12-7 win over Progress. Um, uh, Danny, it doesn't look like the Progress home ground advantage worked for, 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 the, for the final score in the Shield final. Well, I don't know, JP. Just remember, Hamadiers are the host. So obviously, uh, you know. Okay, now we. You see. <laughs> 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 Nobody <laughs> played well. Do uh, you think he's favouring his own squad yet? I think he, Mr. Jones, is trying to say they let them win. They, no, I don't know about that. We, we would never have that kind <laughs> of thing. As like no, I said, there's, uh, no, there's no match fixing in the no rugby. Match fixing, yeah, <laughs> there's no. too much bad blood going on the field. Um, but it is certainly fantastic they have mm. it. And has, of course, Hasim Samsudin, the head coach there at um, Hamadiyas. Uh, nice to see a smile on his face, and of course. Very passionate about the uh, coaching for uh, the year uh, there. Let's take a look now at the game highlights between Vineyards and Morningstar in the Cup Final. So it ended up being a win for Vineyards, 12 points to 7 over Morningstar, winning the Community uh, Cup um, uh, there at the uh, at City Park over the weekend. The Community 10s coming away with a win there. Um, Jerome, um, Vineyards, uh, well, we saw them earlier on, and of course then Morningstar, uh, tight match. Yeah, it was two good teams played, uh, but um, Vineyards, uh, especially up front, were a bit too strong. I think Morningstar had a couple of opportunities, but... Um, the smaller backs um, try to run into the, the big backs of, of Vineyard, so I don't, I don't understand where they'd come from. Uh, <laughs> if, they, if you have uh, two guys next to you and you're small, you rather pass the ball yeah. than running into a big guy. So I you think they had space. opportunities. So important to find space when you're playing mm. sevens and tens. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I suppose in fifteens as well. In fifteens as well. Yeah. And exactly. In, and also, if you're smaller than, than the, the guy in front of you, you make a plan, you don't go through him, you go around him. You or do a geo aplon. Or you, yeah, or you, you pass. Do a, you do a geo aplon, you do step, step. <laughs> All right, let's catch up now with Vineyard's captain, Tamir Murat. Well, we're looking strong this year. I think um, 
I know it's cliche that you always say that this is going to be our year, but it is our 75th anniversary. So uh, we obviously went out with a bang and got a new sponsor, which I need to thank National Fire and Security for coming on board at the club. So we are actually looking solid and we actually set the target to come and win this tournament. It wasn't uh, a fitness thing. We actually said that guys, we're coming here and we're going to win this tournament. And yeah, the guys pulled through. Yeah, it's brilliant for club rugby. And I think that uh, more initiatives, I should say thank you to Amadeus Rugby Club for putting initiatives like this together. Um, I always say that bringing rugby to the community is what it's all about. I mean, come on, did you see Morning Stars um, supporters? Uh, they were carrying on in the stadium. They gave us, uh, uh, you know, uplifting us on the field as well. So it was brilliant for community rugby. I would love to see this be an annual thing from Amadeus. Yeah, well, we, we set a target for ourselves five years ago when we were in the region that we want to play Super A in 2019, and we missed that boat. So we're looking to play two th Super in 2020. Being our 75th anniversary this year, we're going all out to try and win it. So yeah, we've come through the ranks every year. We knew that Super B is not going to be easy in the first year, but we did well, a couple of narrow losses. So hopefully this is our year. Tom Irma right there, um, no stranger, a long time friend of Cape Rugby TV. Been inv involved in uh, Vineyards for a long time, of course, uh, involved also, um, uh, Danny, with, uh, not involved, he's part of the Murat family. Yeah, the, uh, look, the, the Murat and rugby are, <coughs> uh, are they move together, <laughs> correct, whether it's from the same parents or not. Uh, there's many Murats and they're all in rugby and yeah. uh, they, they're doing their bit for the game. Interesting, looking at the way, you can see Tamir has got TV experience, acting experience. He's a, he's a guru in the world of sales. He does a lot of, in fact, he's even written a book on sales training and, um, and uh, was involved with uh, creating a movie around uh, the, the Murat family. Um, having a captain like that, that is so um, um, eloquent, uh, it, it's, it's nice to have someone who can motivate you in that sense. Yes, communication is everything and, and he definitely has the communication skills. Yeah. So obviously it makes it easier to get players uh, you know, surrounding him, getting them onto the same page and producing onto the field. So it does help. Is that something that one should be looking at as a club, uh, leadership development? Look, you get various forms of leadership and leaders. And sometimes in certain areas you need the good motivator, the good communicator. In others you find where the captain is the silent assassin. He leads by example. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it depends on, on the, the, with a group of players. Um, as I said, various uh, uh, instances f uh, focus them. So yeah, in, in their case, he is the man for the job. Um, Tamir Murat then, of course, uh, head coach, uh, at least uh, head, uh, not head captain, but captain of uh, Vineyards. We also managed to speak to the Morningstar assistant coach, Rodney Belcham. Ja, nee, dat, dat was de um, eerste keer wat ons tien speelt. Um, maar die guys het ge, gepitcht en hulle het, hulle het gedoen wat hulle, wat hulle kan. Um, made it all the way to, to, the, to the final. Um, short geval daar, but overall good at the office. And that's off to Amadeus, to the planning committee for putting this all together. Yeah, um, obviously it helps the fitness, but I think a, a great um, booster for our confidence. Be leading up to the, to the friendlies and also just for the guys to again to test themselves against the clubs that you would consider generally a stronger club um, whether it be because of the team that they play that the club the league they play in or the the type of players that they have um, I think the big day thing that stood out for us we could test ourselves against a, a physical variance obviously they, they they had the advantage on the physical side but just to, to test ourselves on, on all fronts yeah, I, I think the Cinderella story sums it up quite quite nicely. Um, and again, for a club that is not even four, five, five years old, to find ourselves now in in Super C, um, we're excited for the for the challenge. Obviously, we know we're going to have to dig deep. Um, primary goal to stay in the league and build on from that. But I think all the guys, um, players, coaches, management, we all realise that we're definitely going to have to step up and dig deep to to achieve our goals for the year. Ronnie Belcham, uh, of course, uh, assistant coach at Morningstar. Uh, Jerome, look familiar to you? Yeah, uh, we just said now uh, he mm. was at Red B, so um, I don't know where he, if he still stay that way. But um, it's good to see that he, I mean, he's involved in coaching now in, yeah. in, 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 in at Morningstar, and um, yeah, I, I I don't know if he still if he travel that far or if he stay in Durbanville, but um, he's he's involved. Nice to see players moving into the coaching yeah. space. Yeah. Right, folks, Dulux Maitland is, of course, on board with Cape Rugby TV. Dulux Maitland at number 30, Cooper Road. They will do all your paint supplies for you. They'll do your tinting according to exact. So, in fact, if you've got a wall that's one color and you need to repaint that wall, you take that sample, 
to Dulux Maitland number 30 Kubrick Road and they will be able to match the wall color for you exactly as you need so special color matching there you see behind me now Dulux Maitland so when you go over Fort Checker Road just look for the store the store that you see on the screen behind me look for Dulux Maitland they are the specialist paint center number 30 Kubrick Road right we managed to catch up with Yester Rafir of course at their uh, pre-season training we'll be taking a look at uh, Yester Rafir as well as of course Busy Bee's uh, pre-season training all that and more after the break. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. And as you know, we have been catching up with a lot of clubs with their pre-season training. This has been a fantastic opportunity for us to keep um, uh, exposing the clubs and get their pre-season training, as, of course, in uh, preparation for, for the league. Uh, just talking about the league and the fixtures, Mr. Jones, uh, um, any idea when the fixtures are going to be released? JP, next week, Wednesday, it will be released on Cape Rugby TV. Next week, Wednesday, we'll be able to take a look then at the different... Um, we can see the Super League A's and Super League B's and all the divisions. Definitely. All right. Has it been quite a big job uh, uh, setting up the fixtures so far? It's always a challenging job because you have so many permutations and then obviously there's many clubs um, sharing fields, so you have to look at home and away. Um, and then, of course, um, we're coming from a drought season into a dry season. Yeah. Um, the impact of the drought, you know, we, this year we are 3B. But last year, up until the end of December, we were 6B. And 6B meant that if you were going to house, uh, house a field, it had to be with, um, with effluent water or ball water yeah, yeah, yeah. and not pot or so potable all of that, water. All of those things get taken into account when you look at the fixtures because it of team sharing, field can't get too much traffic on it. Yeah, so on, all okay. those things. So the whole, a lot of, lot of work to do because I think you've got to do quite a few thousand fixtures, in fact. I think there's about 300 games on a weekend. That's right. Yeah. Right. Well, if you've got 110 clubs and if every club had to play on a weekend, you're looking at no less than 50 fixtures. And if every fixture had a first team, a second team, and a third team, or maybe even under 20s, then you could be looking at 300 fixtures in a, in a weekend. No, most definitely yeah. your, your top, uh, I mean, your right is 300 fixtures. Plus, um, then of course, it's the fourth team. There's, there's 45 teams um, that have four teams. I mean, and so that you divide it by two. So that's another 20 plus games. And then obviously your reserve leagues. Um, so yeah. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of paperwork to do there. All right, folks, let's take a look now at our first preseason for this weekend. Of course, uh, we'll also be taking a look at Busy Bees, but let's take a look now first what happened at Easter of his preseason training. They're playing in the Northern League at the moment. Jerome, once again, functional training, tire flipping, push-ups, sit-ups. Yeah, it's a normal, normal pre-season. Yeah. Um, it's good that it's good that they do that, and um, also at the right time, doing some breakdown drills. So they're getting slowly but surely getting contact ready for the games. Yeah, looking good. Esther Rafir, 
practicing there on a on a, on what let's just call it a hard field. That's what makes the boys so quick out at Yostera Fear, a hard field. Not much water on that on that field at the moment, that's for sure. Um, but that's what the, the boy makes the probably one of the reasons why the boys are so quick at Yester Fear. Uh, let's catch up now with their uh, head coach at uh, Yester Fear, Pedro April. Ja, always nice. Het is zo lekker. Laat off-season gaat door de tweede week in december toe. Het is nu zo voor een maand gerust. Die tweede week in januari is weer begin uh, met die, met die pre-season. Zo so die ouders lijkt goed. Dat hebben redelijk op hulle ook gewerkt. Uh, so ik ben redelijk impressed met die ouders fitness op die stadion. Uh, ons werkt net om ouders een beetje meer te groen. Want uh, het is kaal van die mannen op die stadion. Uh, redelijk goed geweest. We hebben redelijk klomp jong mannen gespeeld op die stadion. Want ons kan niet elke keer zeggen als bouw ervaring op je. Dat is ook wel eens zeggen. Ons heeft nog een eigen leentijd gehad om een keer ervaring op te bouwen. Het was een redelijk goede seizoen. Ons het niet die, die, die mijlpalen behalen. Het is graag bouw behalen in het vorige seizoen niet. Maar ons is vol hoop. Ons is vol energie. En ons is redelijk prepared om die jaar uh, weet, te corrigeren. Het is laatste jaar gefouteerd. Uh, en dat is een goede band. Die geest is goed. Het uh, is lekker om samen met die mannen te werken. En dat wil niet wees. Dat is dus het belangrijkste. Eerste review is altijd recht. Uh, Riva is never good. Uh, no guts, no glory. Ons is altijd hier, ons werk hard. Wat is hier inzet, krijgen we ons gewoonlijk in de league in de wedstrijden uit. Uh, ons is getoond de afgelopen twee jaar dat ons kan redelijk competeren in de rugby speel. Uh, it's just the big moments we haven't played uh, big enough. Uh, maar ons weet het. Ons staan dat ons gaan werken aan onze negatieve en ons gaan werken aan onze fouten. Uh, en ons weet waar ons moet schaaf om recht te wees voor hier seizoen. Uh, wat gewoonlijk gebeurt in de Noorden League is, uh, gaat één sterk van uit, dan nou komt maar volgende sterk van in. Uh, so ons krijgen die paps van in. Elke wedstrijd is een derby, elke wedstrijd is hard. Uh, en ons moet hard genoeg weten om te kunnen competen in de league. Ja, finally na, na hoe lang af, zeg maar, maand, zo so, so lekker is. Zo so sterk, zo so groep lijkt lekker. En het uh, lijkt like, uh, uh, ons is net bezig om onze, 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 onze sapen net onze skills op onze fouten wat we het laatste jaar gemaakt het. Ja, het is altijd lekker. Oud, jong, enige een is welkom hier zo. Ons lijkt like in nieuwe gezichtjes, ons lijkt like, kijk wat hulle kan doen. Sommtijds, de meeste van die tijd is een paraïs hulle voor ons. Dan weet ons nie wat ons doen, ja, maar ons oude pera maar step up. Ja, ons het een briljante seizoen gehad, dat is maar net klein goeikies wat ons, wat ons gaan nikkel het. Maar ons is bezig om het recht te maken. Die jaren zijn nou stopping is. Ja, zo is het een gemeenschapclub. Oh, enige een in de eerste rivier. We even van aan af. Als welkom hier bij ons. Ons is een goede bands ouwens. Ons lijkt like nieuwe mensen. Zo, so, als er mensen in die gemeenschap is wat ook zijn, enige tijd welkom. Ons is bij je vriendelijk. Altijd recht voor alle. Enige tijd, enige een. Ons die mollies net. I nearly said Dalen Oliver, but it's Daryl Oliver, of course, uh, center there at um, Eerste Revere. Let's move on. Uh, passionate, passionate, Danny. Definitely, definitely. Mm. And um, uh, he's using television to the, in the right way of, of encouraging people to join the club. It's just yeah. great. Fantastic. Right. And if you want to join the clubs, you can still until when? Until the 30th of June. Roughly the 30th until of June, roughly, yep. Yeah. Okay, so folks, uh, the doors are still open at the clubs. If you want to play club rugby, find a club in the neighborhood. There's a club. There's always a club in the neighborhood near you. Um, right, folks, let's catch up now with uh, uh, Busy Bees. Of course, as you know, Hilton Pettinger is the head coach out there. Busy Bees boys, of course, been actively involved with Jerome Parvata's development squad as well. Let's take a look at uh, Busy Bees pre-season. They've, of course, just been promoted to Super League B.
Yes, yeah, most definitely Lorenzo, because why you would think the off season is long, but it was just a couple of weeks, then we were back in early January. But it's nice to be on the field. Yes, it is, Renzel. You know, it's um, I'd like I'd like to say that we are blessed to have seniors, we are blessed to have juniors, and we are blessed to have ladies. But the totals are there, and I'm loving it. That helped a lot, and that motivated some guys that weren't in the program um, to see what what can be achieved, you know, by the other players. So the out the lot. Western Province helped us a lot on that side. Oh, we we have a couple of tough friendlies because why I believe that. You mustn't play against um, soft opposition and get maybe a good win, and then you can learn nothing from that. We've organized a couple of games uh, against Brackenfell, Crymontain, Gurud, and then we must still announce another team. But there are other tough games, and our fans can expect exciting running rugby from Busy Bees again. Welcome back, everybody. Um, of course, Busy Bees uh, head coach there, Hilton Pettinger. Jerome, um, interesting that their entire squad, male and female, was practicing there together for two months before uh, so far. Yeah, and as uh, Hilton was saying, and the juniors. So it's good to see the whole club and uh, yeah. the whole community are involved there. So it's, it, it's, it's nothing stopped. Even even ladies, like when guys are doing pre-season now in the community, nothing stopped them to join in. Yeah. So it's a good, good sight to see that they've got everybody in, involved. Danny, just talking about the ladies, do we have a, a number of ladies teams in West Yeah, Wales? we have, um, we had six, we're pushing it up to ten this year. Ten yeah. ladies teams, ten ladies teams, fantastic stuff. We'll be following women's rugby, of course, during the course of the year. We're looking forward to taking a look at and promoting women's rugby. Uh, we managed to speak to uh, Luvo Yapis, of course, the flank at Busy Bees. And uh, thereafter, we'll take a look at what happened with the Stormers after the break. Yeah, it's very nice. Like with the programs, we've been like busy with uh, the HVC last year. It's been great, and uh, the effort uh, the players have been keeping, like during the, the first year, uh, it's been great. So it's nice to be back here on the fold. Yeah, yeah, the commitment is there. The players, like, yeah, we, we want to keep it going because, like, it's a different season, and we're new to the to the league, so. We, we need all the numbers and uh, as you can see the players are committed to, to what the coaches order them to do. Uh, with the program we've been doing, uh, we, we, we're much ready to, to face those guys. Uh, if they can do it, we can also do it. So we, we're 100% ready for them. We, we can show them how we, we play rugby. So yeah. Right, welcome back, everybody. As you know, the DHL Stormers are preparing for their season. Mr. Jones, I see you managed to bring us a jersey. There we go. Right, this is uh, Mr. Jones. Danny, is this the uh, Stormers jersey for 2019? It is, JP. I see they've got a new sponsor, BLK. That's right. And other uh, guys at DHL and Bright Rock on course on board as well. They spell it right? Yeah, they spelled it right. Definitely, definitely. So this is the one of the Stormers jerseys, folks. Of the course, if you. Jersey. Is this a home jersey? Right, this is the Stormers home jersey. Fantastic jersey, I love it. Maybe I'll take off some Oops, I've got a microphone on, I've got to be very careful. Stormers jersey, right, if you join the Newlands Faithful, as you know, for only a thousand rand, you can get yourself uh, one of the selected item jerseys. I think you can even choose your own jersey. As you know, the Stormers played in at the Cape Town Stadium in their Thor jersey um, over the weekend. Um, right, so join the Newlands Faithful, the fantastic package. But before we talk more about that, let's catch up with the Stormers preseason training session. Yeah, I think we're quite happy with the way it went against the Bulls. Um, obviously, some fixables that we must get right, but I think um, as far as the, the, the things that we've been working on during the preseason, we saw what we wanted. Um, and the guys are really happy with that. I think that was probably the most impressive thing, you know, it was a full strength, almost full strength bull side. Um, it was a, a, a youngish a Stormers team, but it's showing the, the depth that we've got at the Union and I think that's very exciting. And, and like you said, I think most importantly, the guys put their hands up and we, we made it a good game. I think exactly that. I think it was exciting to see us. The uh, unstructured play was very good in turnovers, which I think we've been working on for the last three years, and it seems to be improving year on year. 
Um, but in saying that, I think we want to ensure that uh, that we do the structured stuff just as well as the unstructured stuff, and that's what we'll be working on now for the next two weeks. Uh, great, great opportunity again for I think you know for the guys to get one last hit out before the tournament starts. Um, I think it'll be a bit different from the team last last week against the Bulls. Um, possibly a lot of the Springboks will be back, so it'll be good to see them back in action. And uh, yeah, we look forward to it. Uh, DHL Stormers captain Chris Van Sail. Um, of course, uh, is is Sia captain? Do we know yet? Who is the official captain? Not announced yet for um, Stormers. As far as we know, it's Sia. Sia Felicia. Yeah, I think uh, Chris Van Sail standing in there as mm. captain during the. Um, during the, the Cape Town uh, the, the match there. Of course, uh, the Lions, the Sharks, the, um, the Bulls were all in action at the Cape Town Stadium. Remember, you can, uh, you can win this DHL Stormers, not win it, you can go and join up at the, uh, for the Newlands Faithful. Go to www.stormers.com and uh, sign up for the Newlands uh, Faithful package. Of course, the Faithful. Um, uh, Jerome, we're going to leave it at that. We're looking forward to getting some more input. You've got some big rugby this weekend. Yeah, we're playing a uh, curtain race on Friday at Wellington uh, against Poland. Uh, Poland B side with the Supersport uh, or the club uh, club guys playing in the Supersport Challenge for us, the squad that we're busy with. And your squad is then playing against Poland? Yeah, we're playing against Poland. Yeah. And the Stormers are playing after us uh, at Poland also. We played four, Stormers played half past five at, uh, in Wellington uh, at Poland Stadium. Yeah. Who are the Stormers playing against? Poland. The, 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 the main we play against the B, ta, B side, Bull and okay. B. All right, and I just want to make sure because you're confusing me. You're both playing against Bull. I was playing 30 against 15, wouldn't be a fair contest, Danny. Certainly not. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> but it looks like it's going to be exciting mm. again. In a way, you're going back to the old home ground. That's where the, the original Stormers Boerland games used to take a place pre season. Yes, uh, we're quite happy to play Boerland in Wellington. Uh, we know yeah. there's a good crowd out there and uh, faithful Stormers supporters. So yeah, we thought we'll. Um, we, I mean, we. It's our way of saying thank you to Poland for being a, a neighbour. A good neighbour. Mm. All right then. Of course, uh, that's a wrap from us here at Cape Rugby TV, folks. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com for us Cape Rugby TV. Also, follow us on Instagram, and we're looking forward to more player profiles on our Instagram account. You know, uh, good luck for the weekend, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks, JP. Will be a good weekend. Yeah, looking forward, Danny. Thanks very much, as always. Thanks, JP. See you next Wednesday. With the fixtures. Definitely. Looking forward to it. Of course, this is where you're going to find it first, folks. The Cape Rugby TV uh, will host the uh, announcement of the league fixtures. We'll just take a look at the first weekend's fixtures, but we'll know that they'll be out formally. That's a wrap from us here, Cape Rugby TV. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye.